Hey guys, Dayra TC coming to you with another video. And as the title says, this is my regional deck that I chose to play, and it's Queen. Um, so basically, this video is gonna go through the deck list, go through the cards choices on why I chose the card in the deck, and then convince you guys that you sh if you wanna play a non-meta deck into the meta, why you should choose Queen as your regional trader cup for OP06 uh, deck. Uh, so let's get to it, guys. Um, so Queen is an OP04 black and yet black, blue and yellow leader uh, that lets you basically get into the late game and stall. You know, he's a big boy, he's a tanky boy. So basically what he does is if you have four cards total from life and hand or less, um, you get to draw a card or gain a life and you're able to gain a life when you attack with him with a Dawn If you have an eight cost or higher uh, card on the field um, so in the, Not that complicated effect, but it becomes complicated to a point that you want to make sure that the cards you're gaining life with our cards are gonna trigger and help you win those matchups and that's what's gonna determine you to actually take this deck to another level uh, by knowing the matchups and knowing what you need to see and how you're going to manipulate the top cards of your deck to make an advantage happen. And that's how you run Queen. So, very good leader. I really, really like him. I had a fun time playing with him. Um, so, with that theme, let's go ahead and start it. And I start by playing three Devolves. So the name of the game in this meta is Beating Yellow Katakuri. That's the deck that you're going to face off 9 times out of 10 in these regions of Treasure Cups. And as you guys know, yellow hates blockers, so we're going to run a lot of blockers. But we also want to run blockers that rearrange our top cards, and Duval does that. Duval is a 2-drop blocker, so it helps um, as a chump blocker to not only play a card from your hand to lower your hand size in the late game, uh, but it also rearranges your top three cards. So you're able to look at three cards, rearrange it to a point that you're able to draw and then gain a life. And then uh, hopefully that card being a trigger and then you draw again on your following turn. <clears throat> or sometimes you draw and gain two lives, which can happen in this deck. So this will help you make sure that what you're drawing and then the next two cards being the cards you need to put in the top of your life. The other thing you can do is instead of putting on top of your life, you can always bottom deck those three cards, but you try not to do that. Knowing that yellow hates blockers, this being a cheap blocker will also help out a lot when you need to not only attack, but play a blocker um, and then play either an event card or something else also helps out a lot. Uh, so that's the reason I chose three devolves, not four, because I believe four is just too many to see, especially in the late game. Uh, from there, we play our 2k counter, Hiyori, one of the uh, better 2k counters as a yellow card. Because on play, you're able to grab a card from your life and then put any card from your hand to the top of your life. And because Queen runs a lot, a lot of triggers, this is hopefully going to be a trigger card that's going to help you stall and get to a late game because that's where Queen shines. From there, we go ahead and play one of the better yellow triggers being for Capones. Again, helping you stall to get to late game and helping you win some games when they hit the trigger, right? It's also a 2k counter when you see them in your hand. From there, we go ahead and play four boas. Uh, these boas are the same thing as these brulees. They are a three cost trigger blocker, so when they get hit, and it triggers, you play them for free. Very good shunt blocker, very good against yellow, especially. Um, definitely against good against most decks, but you know, mainly yellow. Um, it helps out a lot, so definitely we maximize this at eight. <clears throat> also, the trigger is very important because then you don't put it in your hand, allowing you to have low cards in hand so you can activate the effect in the late game, too. Uh, from there, we go ahead and play another uh, rearranger, which is four Dofis. He's a three-drop 
uh, blocker that lets you see the top five and then you rearrange it as possible as you need it for your queen's effect um, as you guys been counting this already puts that at 15 blockers <clears throat> from there we play another blocker putting us at 19 right now and this is a Sanji blocker uh, very good offensive and defensive wise it's a good trigger because you get this card, card from hand to play it which helps you out a lot with the queen again to lower cards in your hand so you can activate its effect as soon as possible um, nothing much to say right there just more more blockers against that yellow matchup from there we go ahead and play one of the better blue cards in this set being pudding um, as you guys know putting on play basically tells your opponent to put all their cards back in the deck shuffle draw fresh five um, this very this helps against yellow because yellow will gain a couple cards in their hand especially with the pair of powers effect allowing them usually go to nine to ten cards in hand that's when you went ahead and played the pudding putting that back down to five and then take it from there <clears throat> is it good against other decks of course but you know again we're just focusing on the yellow matchup right now that's what I'm comparing it to. From there, we played two more blockers, putting us at, what was that, 21 now? I lost count. Point being more blockers. Um, it's a 5-drop extra, giving you a 6k counter. Um, 6k blocker, I mean. He is a 1k counter. But most importantly, on play, you get to rearrange the top 5 again. Um, again, you can always put him in the bottom, but you try not to, allowing you to have 9 cards right now that will allow you to rearrange your top cards <clears throat> most of the time by seeing at least two to three of them it's all you really need but having multiple is not a bad idea sometimes you know from there this is a flex spot it is one uh, momo the new momo does a five drop 6k blocker no counter though but on play uh, it does not rearrange, but what it does is you're able to put a land of Wano card from the field to the top of your life. And as you know, Yori is a land of Wano, and sometimes at playing her, you lose a 2k counter. You do gain that trigger advantage, but then she just sits there. This allows you to play a blocker and also gain a life with the Yori that's out there. Remember, it's a land of Wano, so there is other targets, but right now that is one of the targets. Um, that could help you, again, stall the game to get you to the late game. And it's also good in the late game, too, because when you gain a life by playing him, you gain a blocker plus another life. Um, I was experimenting with him, but I prefer the extra because the rearranging is more important, especially since you want to see the cards when you need to see them and not see the bricks very early. Um, but the Momo does have its own advantage, and that's why I think running at least one does help out a lot that you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, but when you do see it, more, nine times out of ten, the effect will activate. Um, from there, we go ahead and play our big boys, and we start out with another blocker. <laughs> uh, two more Amar Amarakis. Uh, so, or Green Bull, right? So he's a 8K blocker, no counter, of course. Um, but he's an activate main that allows you to discard a card from hand to return a two drop or less from your field or your opponent's field to the original hand. So I can put the Hiyori back to my hand, or I can um, put their card back in your hand, or you can bottom deck it too. If the effect activates, uh, not only that you get to discard a card from your hand, allowing you to hopefully activate Queen's effect then, um, but you also gain a 3,000 attack boost that helps you attack with them if you want to close games. But 9 times out of 10, I just keep them up for blocking if I'm not going to go for game. Very good card. Helps you a lot, and it helps you very very much so against the yellow matchup as well. And that's the reason I chose him over the 8-drop Katakuri. Uh, from there, we played one of the MVPs in the game, in this deck, is uh, 3 Mihawks. I was running 4, but I think 4 against 2 Cloggy, so I think 3 is enough. Very good effect. On play, you can just bottom deck a 7 drop or less. Um, and then, now because he is a 9 cost, now his effect starts activating if he stays in the field. 
and he's just a 9-9K uh, beater as well. So, very strong card. Definitely recommend him at 3. Uh, you could try him at 4, though. Um, and, of course, the main MVP of this deck is the 4 Yamatos. Uh, so, as you guys know, it's a 9-drop, so this effect does activate. Bomb play, you get to pop depending on combination of your life and your opponent's life. And then you have 1 or less life in uh, one or less life you can to gain a life um, so here's when the you know the combos happen with Yamato that you can sometimes gain two life by playing him going to two life and then if you have two cards in hand <clears throat> by putting a dawn on the extra dawn on him swinging you then gain another life allowing you to go to three life um, or gaining two or if you, even if you're at zero you can go from zero to two life and then hopefully if you plan correctly, the two cards that you put into your life are both triggers, allowing you to even survive more attacks and hopefully end the game the following turn, or if not, play another Yamato to continue stall. Another side note, he is the Land of Wano card I was talking about with Momo. So not only you have Hiyori as target, you have the uh, Yamato as a target. Which also becomes uh, cheeky because sometimes you need to see an Yamato to continue to stall. So allowing you to play the Momo, put the Yamato on top of your life after you swing with him, of course. Um, allowing you that if they attack you, you put him back in your hand and you have another Yamato ready to go. From there, we play some event cards to help you... Oh no, not yet, I'm sorry. And then the new 9-drop Sanji. So this Sanji, very, very good. I think two is enough. Uh, too many becomes either cloggy or just you start gambling. So because we read, we have nine cards that read range our, our deck, <clears throat> our top five deck, I mean, uh, you can plan it out for Sanji. There's been multiple times that if I have Sanji in hand, I play Dofi on even my Dawn three turn. You can plan out that the first card that you draw is going to be your 5th Dawn, then your 7th Dawn, then your ninth Dawn, and then your last two um, being the Sanji's turn, right? Because if this goes to your ninth Dawn being the third card that you're drawing, then you can play Sanji on that curve, making sure that the 4th card becomes the card that he automatically plays on play. So if Mihawk is between the top 5, I possibly put Mihawk on that 4th card slot so then on my nine could turn you have to play the sanji because then you already know what the fourth card is which is mihawk mihawk comes out so now you have two nine drops to come out or even a yamato or not Meraki would be good too uh giving you two big bodies immediately on the board for pressure and then queen's um effect can start activating to gain a life if you have less cards in hand at that point um, so Sanji is very good, especially with the combination of the X-Ray, the Dofi, or even the Devolves. But mainly the Dofi and the X-Ray, because with the top five, <clears throat> it allows you to rearrange very, very early. Um, but you could do it in the late game too, like at your 7th on turn, you can Devolve. And Devolve will prepare you for your ninth on turn, because it's top three, right? So this is why the Sanji helps a lot, mainly to play two big bodies um, on curve, and that usually gives you a huge advantage in most matches. <clears throat> so from there is where we play the event cards. Um, so we go ahead and play three red rocks. Um, so again, yellow, right? What's yellow's main monster? 10 drop big mom. <clears throat> so this deck can handle 10 drop big mom as a one of. So if they play one 10 drop big mom, no problem. You have shunt blockers for days. As you guys can see, the whole deck is basically blockers. So there's nothing that 10 drop big mom can do. Yeah, they can reject you and blah, blah, blah. But they can't rest it with their uh, two cost event card. So they have to either get out to reject uh, your shunt blockers. And even then you have multiples, so you'll be fine. The problem lies when they run if they have two 10 drops or more on the field uncontested, then then you lose the game. 
So how do we counter that is by playing red rocks. So when you play against yellow, you really want to save the red rocks <clears throat> into your hand until those 10 drops come out. Because once you answer those 10 drops, then there's nothing that the yellow player can do against you, um, especially since you have multiple blockers, and then you just slowly win the game. Um, if they see no 10 drops or they see it too late, then it's a mute point. You still win the game. And like I said, their win condition will be that you don't have any red rocks or maybe just one and they see three or more 10 drop big mobs back to back. If they do that, then yes, that's <clears throat> there's really nothing you can do against that. But luckily, most matchups, they only see up to three. Uh, two to three is usually their average. Um, if they see two or less, you're doing fine. If they see more than three, it becomes a problem. If they see three, then as long as you see two red rocks, you're doing fine. And how do you guarantee seeing your red rocks is yellow? You have your rearrangers that you're able to put them in your hand, and then you just keep the red rocks until those 10 drops come out. And that's the reason we run three. Also, against other matches, it also has a good trigger that you're able to rearrange and put into attack your life if you need to bottom deck um, some aggro against you, against other matches. <clears throat> From there, we play uh, two Gravity Blades. Uh, Gravity Blade, a very, very strong card. I wish you could bump it to three, but I do not have the room, especially since we're carrying yellow. Um, very good against yellow. Um, it bottom decks the two, uh, can borrow the two pair of peril, or get dots in a peril. Uh, you get to that late game even uh, safer. But definitely very strong against the aggro decks, against Rayu and Zoros. Um, this allows you to hopefully get to the late game without losing. Also has a very strong trigger to bottom deck of five cards or below, so it also helps you with stacking. Uh, but definitely you want to see in your hand when you're playing against the aggro. And of course, when you, get, when you play against aggro like Rayu and Zoro, you want to go first. Uh, and you hit these on curve, especially if you rearrange it so you draw this on your 7 down turn. Lastly, because we run a lot of non-counters, I think there's up to 15. <clears throat> you run two of these zero drops that allow you to not only trash a card from your hand, allowing you to get to that uh, Queen's effect um, much earlier, but you also get a 3k counter by trashing a non-counter. The main thing we run this one over the blue one is because of its trigger. If it's your last life, which you can make happen by the rearrangement, um, you get to trash a card and then gain another life and then hopefully that next card is also another trigger that will give you either a Capone or a blocker that will hopefully block another attack. So with just this being your last life, you're able to hopefully um, block two attacks, right? Because then you have the or three attacks, I mean, because they attack, activate trigger, attack, activate trigger, hopefully be a blocker or a Capone. And then either stun their last attack or block their last attack and hopefully give you another turn to end the game or stall even more with a Yamato play and so that's the reason we really like this card and of course if we see it then we're able to use this, its effect to thin our hand and also uh, counter so we can get to a late game and that's the deck list guys and that's the rationale hopefully I explain everything um, to you guys understanding um, and hopefully you guys understand why I chose the cards I chose <clears throat> so uh, for those who don't care about this next topic thank you guys for watching but let's go into um, matches why why do I believe Queen is the deck to go as you guys can see for the way the deck list is built Queen does very, very well against yellow. Like I said, I already gave you guys an explanation how you lose against yellow most of the time is if they see four or 10 drop or even three 10 drops uh, back to back and they have to be back to back. If it's one 10 drop, you answer it, you don't answer it and then it's going into a late, late, late game and they see their second one, it doesn't matter. But if it's 10 drop after 10 drop after 10 drop and you cannot answer that, then it becomes a problem. So that's that's the only way you lose. I mean, I guess the other way would be if you just drop 
draw for Yamato's, Mihawks, and Sanji's, you draw nothing else and no trigger activates, then yes, you lose against any deck at that point. Um, but that usually doesn't happen, so that's a mute point. So other than that, you win against yellow. Um, even if they see the 10 drops you got, if you see your red rocks, then you're fine. If you have your shun blockers, you're fine. And then you, as long as you do your rearrangement correctly and keep gaining life, the yellow player cannot end you until the point that they can't handle your board and then you just win the game. So yellow being the main player to beat and queen having a favorable matchup against that, you're looking at 58 to almost 60% win rate. Um, and again, that's after like maybe 70, 75 matches against yellow. Um, it's a very favorable matchup for us. Now, against other matches like Moria, uh, Black Moria, um, still favorable matches, but it is close. You're looking at 55% win rate, if I'm, li I'm being a little bit generous. Um, so you do have an advantage against Moria, uh, but you could lose depending on, again, your hand and the way they go out uh, on the field. Uh, but nine times out of 10, you do very well against Moria as well. And so being those two, being one of the most popular decks is why I believe Queen is the deck to choose. Sakazuki is close to 50-50. It's less than Moria, but you're looking at 51, 50. It just keep it 50 50. So it's a 50 50 matchup against Sakazuki, but uh, multiple matches I haven't lost to it, but it's usually very close. <clears throat> uh, it's usually big, I win because due to the triggers. And then um, against Yamato, you do very well against the uh, yellow green Yamato. Again, I, don't know, I mean, again, unless you brick. If you brick, then the Yamato will hurt you the most just because especially if they banish you early being a four life leader then yeah then you lose the game but as long as you don't break and you see the uh three drop on curve or the ball on curve then you're doing fine against the Yamato matchup the worst matchup unfortunately in this meta will be against Raju um if they see their stage card if they see their stage card immediately the first two turns then it becomes a problem against with Queen because they're very, very aggro. Um, you can definitely still win, but you are in that low bracket um, on the low percentage of winning. So you're at 45, 47% win rate against the Rayu, uh, Rayu being the advantage at this point, if they see their stage card. If they don't see their stage card, then you're at 50-50. Um, but it's just because of how aggressive the uh, the deck runs and then you have to get to a late game um, and sometimes you can't get there against radio depending on the variables um, the more that these regions are going the more radios are becoming popular so that could be a problem with queen um, but again if it's mainly the other leaders that I mentioned in the meta being the main ones well category of course being the main out of all of them then queen will do fine um, against rogue decks, I mean against like red, purple, law and Zoro, uh, Queen does very well in those matches. So again, nine times or ten against all these matches, you're at fifty fifty or higher uh, percent win rate. Um, being that you do very well against the main meta deck, which is Katakuri, um, is the main reason I chose Queen for the regionals. How did I do? I went basically XO. Uh, my one, um, but then I had to drop because of Easter. So I was playing until my family got here for to go to the beach. They got here, and I just finished my four rounds. So um, I gave the win to my opponent, even though I won. I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna drop. I don't wanna, don't wanna be mean and just win and then drop." That just, that just messed up. So I, I won the match. I told him, "Hey, just report that you won." Says I'm leaving, and then so technically the record was X1, <clears throat> uh, but you know it was XO, and then I dropped again. Does that really matter? Probably not, um, just because with my history, I usually go XO until like around six ish. Uh, six seven is when I usually lose my first round, and then I use, lose, usually lose my second one in the, either the last round or the one before the last round. So so I can't tell you if I would have done better since more, my records are usually X2. <clears throat> um, 
but because I didn't finish the tournament, I, I don't know. But if I would have continued to play against Katakuris, what was my matches? It was three Katakuris and one Reiju. Um, did very well against all of them, like I'm, like I'm saying. Um, but Reiju was the hardest one. The Katakuris, it's just I saw the red rock when I need to. The other one didn't see any 10 drops, so that's an instant win. And then the four drop pudding just uh, destroyed the other Katakuri. So, um, so that's, that was my experience with Queen. That was very good. Um, that's my rationale with Queen. And then that's the deck list with Queen. I think I've got nothing else to really mention here. Um, so then, if you guys want to play a non-meta deck in the regionals, that's going to throw people off. Uh, most people don't know what Queen does. If they're just getting to the, <clears throat> the game now, they're probably just going to run Katakuri. Or if they do know Queen, they sometimes don't know what the deck is going to run, or sometimes they forget how it functions, giving you not only the knowledge ability, because you're playing against a meta deck, that you know how the cards are going to run 99% of the deck and know what they want to do against your deck that they probably have to think, okay, what his objective is and what cards are he's running. Um, so it can now it can throw them off. So you not only have the advantage in the play against <clears throat> the two most popular decks, uh, you also have the psychological advantage knowing that sometimes they don't know what cards you're running or they forgot what Queen even does, giving you the advantage there as well. Um, so that's my rationale on why you should play Queen, guys. So hopefully you guys like the video. Hopefully you guys uh, like the deck list. Please try it out. It's a fun, fun deck. Um, but definitely, uh, before you take it to Regionals or Treasure Cup, he, he does need some practice to be able to run him effectively. To run him, what you know, normally, uh, you, anybody can do that. That's not a big deal. But to run him to actually compete with the meta decks, you do need to practice um, and not make a misplay with this uh, with this deck. Um, as long as you do that, it's a very competitive deck. Uh, definitely a fun deck. And... Definitely let me know if you guys try it out, how you guys do in your regionals. Um, other than that, guys, Dayra TCG signing out.